Um, so in this paper, we really like to try out one of the interfaces where you're not just leaning the upper body, but uh, you're really leaning with the chair. So this time we're actually tracking the chair. Before going in there, I'd like to think that one of those students, Alexander Kitson and Abraham Machinian, who unfortunately can't make it because they are on vacation and back in Iran, and also my uh, colleague Carmen. So it's also done at the iSpace lab at St. Chris University. So the main question of this one, so the vision is fairly similar, but the question is really whether this kind of more embodied leaning chair can really improve not just the sensation of sense motion, but also spatial orientation behavior and its usability. And uh, if so, why? If not, why not? What's the issue? What can we learn from all this? First of all, you might ask, well, why should this kind of straight leading chairs work in the first place? Is there any reason why? And well, there's a little bit. Some of that I mentioned in the previous talk already. So basically, including at least some vestibular and some proprioceptive cues really seems to be quite important. So we tend to do some systematic navigation errors if there's not at least some physical motion cues involved. We also know that this kind of sensory conflict, visual vestibular conflict, can increase uh, motion sickness and disorientation. And in, in driving flight simulators, this kind of motion cueing has also been shown to reduce workload, increase realism of the control and of the self motion. And as I showed in the previous video, uh, this kind of self-powered motion cueing that you've seen in this gaming chair can actually enhance vection, so the, the illusory sensation of self motion. Um, so here's uh, an example again with the gaming chair. I just showed this already. What I didn't show yet is uh, some of the actual data. So there wasn't a huge difference and here. Again, it turned out there was some quite reusability to the control in that chair, and mechanically it just wasn't well enough built. Another thing we tried was basically using this manual wheelchair where you added some literally rubber bands so you get some force feedback. And that actually produced quite a sizable effect. So comparing uh, the uh, vaccine intensity of strong illusion is, it was almost twice as strong for this wheelchair compared to a mouse and joystick navigation. So there's something in there that, that seems to work. So um, this is again part of the ultimate vision that I just talked about of really creating this kind of dream interface where it's almost like you, in a dream where you imagine you go there and then you go there. Uh, but having given you this visceral embodied sensation that you really in there present in there immersed and that it allows you to navigate. So here we focus a bit more on the effectiveness of uh, our first prototype can already help in there. And uh, one of the inspirations came from Sheffy Beckhaus work on what they call the chair I.O., which is basically this kind of swapper chair here. People sit down on it. It's basically you're sitting on this really huge comfy joystick. You move, uh, you lean forward, you move forward. You lean sideways, you move sideways. So fairly intuitive. Basically, within five seven seconds, people kind of get it how it works. And you just need to sit them down. So, so that's very. Uh, <coughs> the, they did some user evaluation studies, uh, which are quite promising. Didn't look specifically for navigation behavior. Not, not that much quantitative data, I guess. They thought, okay, well, that's a good starting point. Uh, so they haven't addressed actual navigation data yet. So in the current experiment, uh, what you want to do is really compare the navy chair to the kind of the best thing that people normally do, which is a joystick, because they're so highly people have so much experience with it, uh, and they underwent so many iterations until people came up with useful joysticks. So we just compared the joystick, we extended the angle a bit. We used it here for navigation, but also for pointing later on. People are seated on a stationary chair, little things, so we have the same height behind a flat projection screen, and we compared it to the swapper chair. So that's the original swapper chair. Based on the first usability studies, we actually changed uh, this one a bit, so we did have this See, but a little bit <coughs> rest, it has some force feedback for, for rotation. So even so, when you do don't put it down, you, you know and sense where it is. You tilt it a little bit forward. And the other thing we did was uh, attach an optical tracking system that's independent of magnetic interference as well. So this all the whole thing looks like basically, so basically it just tracks where it is. Um, and the environment we used was um, somewhat realistic uh, environment here. Uh, and the idea is really to do a simple spatial orientation task. We ask people to learn uh, objects here. So here's a restaurant, for example, the clock tower, the fountain here. And we have an avatar that kind of guides you later on to 
to the so initially people just had to learn the object, they pointed to the different ones until we knew they were good enough, and then remove them. So we removed the landmarks, brought fog in, and so the only thing you have is basically lots of object flow from the grass surface, but you really need to do path integration here. And the purpose of the avatar was to basically lead people out around a certain path that we have comparability across conditions and participants. So in the end, we had uh, these five different positions from where people were asked to uh, point, and the uh, six different pointing targets. And so the main question here was, well, whether or how such an embodied interface like the nanotech could really affect uh, the behavioral measures of spatial orientation and also the usability things that we wanted to do. Okay. We also looked at a lot of different factors, uh, but what was only short papers on only to go out look into gender, which had an interesting effect here. So we found the design, the subject, two different interfaces, everything else has been balanced. Um, if you look at the data, um, so here's the sad news, the nanotech did not perform better, the pointing errors were actually lower with the job set. Um, it's a bit more interesting if you uh, look at gender, so there's a significant interaction here. But that basically means that for the nanotech, males and females are pretty much uh, the same. But, so, but with the joystick, the males perform significantly better than the females. So there's something about using a joystick that somehow males uh, seem to be better with. I guess you can guess what it is. Um, part could be experience, part could be uh, well, just more for gaming it, uh, experience and all these kind of things. Um, we haven't looked too much into this, but it's, it, it happens a lot that you find these gender differences. Typically not as much with the interface, but uh, yeah, definitely interesting. We found a similar trend for what we call the EU orientation errors. So basically, from different points, you can uh, estimate which direction people <coughs> are facing. And you find a similar effect, basically, that for the females, it's fairly similar between the joystick and the damage chair, but the males just do so much better with the joystick. So, something about man and joystick. Um, if you look at the different locations, so this task, I mean, one of the ideas behind this task was to make it so people would get increasingly bad at it. And so after basically one turn, they should still perform relatively well and then successively worse. And that's exactly what we found. And here they are also facing the, the opposite direction. And the last two, they get a little bit better, maybe because they are, they are facing it a somewhat similar orientation as initially. Uh, so there is an effect here. Also, we found less disorientation increase for the males with the joystick condition. So here, compared to the other one here. And similar trend for the eager orientation here. Now, I mean, the big question is why? So, so why did this Navichir not perform as well as we hoped or predicted, given all these wonderful uh, papers that I cited? So what's really going on? And that's, again, where the post-experimental feedback uh, was interesting. So overall, 70% preferred the joystick over the Navi chair, which is, well, first of all, interesting. Uh, so the question is, what can you learn from this? And if you look at what people stated about the joystick, I mean, what they liked about it, the green here, is that it's more accurate, precise, and maybe they're easier to control, and they like the simple proportional mapping. Some people, however, mentioned it was a bit boring, not very interesting, and not very novel. For the Navi chair, we got lots of different uh, responses. Um, on the positive side, many people thought it was more fun, interesting, engaging, immersive. Some people claimed that they got less motion sick because they got a little bit of physical motion in the right direction. Some people mentioned that the physical motion really helped them remain oriented. That's kind of the thing we were after, but it didn't show up in the quant data yet. And one uh, participant, for example, managed that it felt more like actually moving through the virtual reality with your own body. Instead of just looking at the screen and moving an avatar around. So that's very interesting because I mean, we didn't tell them to say this, but that's kind of was the, our intuition behind it. Some people mentioned also that the idea of hands-free navigation should be super useful if you want to actually do something useful. I mean, evolution was a huge step that you didn't have to walk on your hands anymore. Now we're coming back to uh, binding your hands to the keyboard or the mouse or whatever interfaces. So we cannot really naturally attack anymore. It was also one of the issues that came up when we talked to architects right now in some collaboration. What they would like to do is really be able to move through the environment like a normal walkthrough, point to the different things, gesture, interact with people without having to take their hands off whatever device, but by always having them available. 
there's lots of things people thought needed improvement. So some, for some people it was uh, uncomfortable, there were height issues, especially smaller and not so tall people had some issues uh, in there. Some people mentioned slipping off the chair uh, uh, could be a little bit of an issue. Uh, for a few people it took a little while to learn the controls. Some people mentioned that the sensitivity should, should be adjusted, some wanted the more sensitive, some less sensitive, so some personalization could be useful. Some people mentioned it just took uh, cognitive effort to do this, uh, which, I mean, that alone could explain a lot if they really had to spend cognitive resources while doing this navigation task that is really, really hard. That uh, alone could explain why we didn't find the effect. Um, so it clearly really needs a lot more optimization and I mean, in, in a way, it would be hard to do a fair comparison because uh, we need to compete against our, our staff uh, practice with a joystick. So the question is how to do that. Um, so, uh, so, so that's from the current study. Uh, just this last Wednesday, Jake Fryer actually defended his thesis and in slightly different context where I applied uh, with architecture, he did a somewhat related study where he also compared joystick and small with different interfaces. So I'm just going to channel some of these results in here because they match quite nicely. So what you found there was that the intuitiveness of the joystick was rated as high, so that kind of matches the other study. Uh, same with controllability, it was rated as really high with the joystick. We also used this like extra long joysticks so and you could really do precise navigation in this one. Uh, so clearly for the navi chair we need to tune the mapping a lot more and work on training. However, the immersion was also significantly higher for the navi chair. So people's sense of being in this environment and being engaged and immersed in it was higher. Um, and if you look at the qualitative data afterwards, a lot was related to engagement in the environment, enjoyability of the experience and embodiment of people in this environment. So here's a summary kind of come from both studies, but especially the second one. Um, so the second time. So if, if you really want to have people use it, some kind of personalization is important, especially if you use your weight to shift uh, the chair. So larger, smaller, heavier, not so heavy people are coming back to your question. Um, we need to personalize this uh, there basically. Also some people wanted different control mapping. So in the chair, if you lean sideways, we thought, well, okay, maybe you just move sideways. Some people just wanted the it basically to produce a rotation. So people that might have different preferences. Um, we definitely need to fine-tune the leading to velocity mapping, uh, just like I mentioned before. Right now we're experimenting with an exponential mapping where you can do very fine movements by still some clear leading, but you can go really fast. So it's kind of almost replacing a uh, gear shifting that you have in cars or in bicycles or whatever. Especially for having on a display, people would like to have the full 360 rotation ability, whereas uh, if you're in front of the screen, obviously you don't want to turn away from it. In the cage, you might be able to do it, but um, also it seems like if, if you have this chair from the flat screen, you don't get disoriented or motion sick as easy with the few uh, vertebrae that have on the display. There's something strange going on because you have two ways to control rotation one is by moving the head, and one is by moving your butt. And they don't go together well, apparently. Um, but that's also coming back to your comment about, okay, a data. Stopping the move motion or having different velocity models. So, having some kind of toggle so you can just kind of stop the motion, especially architects like the idea of okay, uh, you, you just stop, you interact with it, and then you engage yourself. It's kind of like you stop your car, uh, and uh, this kind of metaphor would work well for them. Giving <laughs> people some kind of safety so they know where forward is, so this kind of service isn't ideal for this. So we work with this experimenting with a uh, chair here, and some kind of clear indication where forward is. That's especially important if you're wearing a head-mount display and you don't know where you are in the physical room anymore. But even in front of a projection screen, it uh, turns out to be quite useful. Uh, the one thing why our architects would love to have this in their office is that it's hands-free. You can interact while doing it. It's fairly intuitive. You can see your clients on it and within uh, just a moment they know what to do and they can explore or engaging. So that was quite interesting uh, to hear these comments and try it out in a more applied context. So to sum up, for the Navi chair, the females and males did relatively similar. For the joystick, the man just did a, a lot better. And there's multiple reasons why that could be, could be experience. 
It also could be that uh, dealing with high regular spatial working memory loads sometimes may seem to do a little bit better there, but we need to look more into that. Um, there's clearly some parts of the mitigation task that need to be optimized. So right now, for example, some people had issues assessing how far they really rotated because they put them on your networks and they weren't so used to the chair yet. So something we couldn't tell whether it was really the issue of the path integration or maybe the more complex spatial update and spatial orientation task. And definitely, so we wanted the high cognitive load because we really wanted to see people at the limit of where they are. But then the problem was that the interface, because it wasn't well trained enough, we didn't just give them, give them a few minutes to navigate. That effectively wasn't enough for them to really be able to use it intuitively as us, the experimenters, could do. I mean, we just sit down and say, oh, this is what you do. But for the participant, they just needed uh, more training. It's almost like a, in game, you need this uh, training practice level before you actually start the main experiment. So we probably did a lot more training. Um, then the controllability of uh, intuitiveness was rated as high for the joystick, but the inversion, even though it's just the first prototype for the navic chair, was actually rated higher. Um, but clearly, in this current state, the navic chair does not improve spatial orientation. That was a little bit disappointing. But we, we know a lot of the issues that might have uh, applied to it. So it, it could be, and let's similar to another study, where we found that if the users have some usability, or especially control issues, that can basically call that any benefit you could have from the additional STDR queues. And um, then there's, it's almost like we need two separate developments for a head mounted display where you can fully rotate or a flat screen where you have a clear orientation in there. So lots of ideas on how to improve the navy chair that I mentioned before by mapping adjustability, stopping possibility, the safety, and so on. So that's the prototype we're uh, currently hoping to work with soon. But there's also some interesting and promising parts in that already in this current version, people have stated that it's more fun and more interesting to use, engaging, convincing, immersive. Some people claim that it introduces less motion sickness, maybe because you actually do have some matching the studio cues that will go in the right direction. And that the physical motion cues help you remain oriented. But the, the sound argument for our architects was really that it's hands free. So they could actually use it while they were talking <coughs> with their participants. <coughs> Alright, so this is Greenland. And thanks again for all the funding and wonderful collaborators. And thanks for your attention. And looking forward to any questions you might have.